Alright guys, so it was free comic book day and I actually didn't get that much so I'm going to show some free comic book day stuff and then I'm going to show some stuff that I fell ass backwards in and like, yes, score for me at least. Alright, so uh, just a few of the books. They had over 60 books for free comic book day. For anybody that's watching this doesn't know what free comic book day, usually the first weekend of May, usually around May 3rd or whatever, whatever the first Saturday is, uh, there's a big promotion going on bring in new people to uh, start collecting comics or check out what's in there and you actually go in there and the local comic book shops will have these books ready spread out and depending on the store some people make it an event some people you know some people have a little sales going on some people end up having people dress up uh, as uh, you know movie character you know some cosplaying going on uh, it just depends what's going on with you, what the, you know how, how much they decide they want to get into it I've been to some spectacular ones and I've went to some ones where it's just you know normal comics so this year they had over 60 of them, and I just grabbed a couple, okay? Bleeding Cool, I'm assuming this is some of their articles and stuff that's popped up on their website and a few things and some printed edition, and as you can see, free comic book day, and of course, uh, they put Spider-Man on there to coincide with Spider-Man being released this weekend, Spider-Man 2 that is. I got the Valiant Universe, number one, and this is great because this is like a uh, old, uh, you know, the old Marvel Universe handbook or the DC Who's Who um, introduces you to the characters, gives them a slight history with the uh, re revamp of uh, uh, well, the revamp, the return of Valiant. I think going on about two two years now, two and a half years, two years. So uh, they're not here in alphabetical order, but uh, you know it's probably how their books came out. You have EXO with a slight history. They even do some storylines that have happened so far with Unity. Uh, and, and like I said, these these. <laughs> I'm not going to get into comic book history now, but I was really glad to get this one, man. But Valiant Universe, this is what I think, uh, I think this is one of the better things, considering that it's for promotion and to pull new, new readers in. I think that's really good. They can read it, read the stories if they're interested. Um, I always get one of these. We have a Bongo Free For All. And this was actually the first year I didn't get a Disney one. Because uh, it's usually uh, Carl Barks' uh, Disney, uh, Donald Duck stories or some... Uh, really really old um, golden age Mickey Mouse stories or something on the back of this Amy and Leela doing their that's kind of funny man because it goes back to Archie you know with Betty and Veronica that's hilarious you know but these usually reprints and stuff uh, this was really cool going all the way back to the 30s with the Buck Rogers strip I love this stuff Buck Rogers Flash Gordon the old pulp stuff back at the dawn when they were making the rules up as they went along, usually a bunch of kids. But uh, that's uh, that's Buck Rogers. You know, um, basically he was a astronaut or something that uh, I think in this version he ended up uh, crashing to a cave or something. I'll give you an origin here and stuff. But anyway, crashing to a cave, he ended up hibernating. He was a man of the 20th century and he wakes up uh, a couple hundred years in the future. They did a kind of thanks to Star Wars in the 70s. They brought him back as a in a, in a TV show, I think, lasted maybe two seasons or something. It was fun. I mean, you know, don't remember really reading it. Um, again, with the Valiant here, I got the Armor Hunters. To see what's going on with this. Uh, don't know a lot about it, but technically, it's the return of Rye. A lot of people are going back. Is it Ray or is it Rye? I always call it Rye, as in Samurai. And basically, Ray Rye. <laughs> It's just this great character based in Japan in the uh, in the year 3000, 3001, and I'm assuming they're going to keep going with that. He came out way back in the day, as uh, back in the 90s with Valiant, uh, at the time of Magnus Robot Hunter in the year 3000, because we always saw, you know, North Am, you know, North American continent, well, what was going on the other side there, so he came out with Rob. When Rob was a fun book, he only lasted a few issues. I uh, got my Judge Dredd fix, got me some 2000 AD books, these are usually oversized, uh, reprints to old, older stories from uh, 2000 AD, uh, an English, uh, I don't know if it's a magazine or a comic book over there, but it's probably this format, uh, and that's where they have a lot of great things in this book, so they have a rich, rich history to pull from and reprint, and apparently for this they did a... Uh, <laughs> Judge Dredd No More story where, you know, it's taking a riff on when Peter Parker quit being Spider-Man and put his costume in the trash and walked away. 
But of course, being at Judge Dredd, they had to throw in a little something extra there. So he beats the shit out of somebody and then walks away. But uh, I've already flipped through this. Some great stuff. And apparently, if I read this right, starting next week, we get Futures in A story set five years in the future. Uh, 35 years in the future of the DC Universe. Um, you know, apparently, Brother I has started assimilating our heroes and stuff. And everybody, uh, our, a lot of heroes have ended up being assimilated and cybernetically enhanced and you know you got Superman and Wonder Woman in them it's like they're cut off at the uh, waist and now they have these uh, spider crawling bodies if you will there's a resistance on there it's flashed with a beard here you go give you a taste of what it is there's Wonder Woman but um Batman and Batman Beyond are in this together and Batman's going to go back 35 years in the future and stop it because apparently that Bruce Wayne and Mr. Terrific built Brother Eye and they were going to, he was going to go back in time, you know, a la Terminator or something and stop all this from ever happening because they're losing. The whole world is like it's assimilated. And of course, Batman Incorporated comes in there. A bunch of uh, Batmans he had hired have been incorporated, assimilated, and they go in there and things happen and it's Batman Beyond that ends up going back and Batman warns him. You know, I won't believe you don't look me up and don't go after Superman because Superman will just muddle things up. He'll mess it up. Don't come after me because I'll try to stop you. I won't believe you. He's already telling him. So he ends up going back in time and it's supposed to be now that he shows up, but he shows up five years in the future and whatever caused Brother I to take over the world is already uh, in effect. Um, not bad. Feels like I've heard it before. You know, so, you know, little... I don't know, maybe little X-Men there, Days of Future Past, maybe a little Terminator. I even remember a DC Comics Presents with Superman and Omac in there. But, you know, anyway, that's my free comic book day stuff. Okay, a couple weeks ago, I went to a flea market up here, and they had tons of these. Wow, I hate that. They had tons of these. Uh, Dread Star Comics, so, you know, good run on it. But uh, Jim Starlin's Dread Star has been announced to become a movie. We'll see if it comes to fruition or not. And uh, this book is supposedly hot. Um, I've never really sat down and read Dread Star. I've seen Dread Star stories in a graphic novel. I've seen Dread, story, Dread Star stories pop up, I think, in Epic Magazine and stuff like that. And for some reason, Dread Star is supposed to take place way, way in the future. I mean, way in the future. To where, uh, if I had to guess, you know, casting of all the people, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, this is early 80s, but uh, I think the Dread Star's actual first appearance, this is, should be Dread Star, I think, his first appearance is actually like Epic Magazine number three, because that's where I saw him first, and this little world that's coming up that Jim Sterling made. And, uh, you know, this is supposed to be a hot book, you know. This is the Epic line, and then in 85, I do know that another series of books came out, but I think it was under a Marvel line, I don't, I don't know. And then it's popped up in other places as indies. I know Brava. I'm at Bravo, a line of comics that Malibu put out uh, that came and went. <laughs> that came and went. Uh, he took it there. He took it a couple places. But what's really good about Jim Starlin having his property uh, being made into a movie is uh, so much of the, even though we got Kirby and Stanley and Ditko and all that stuff with their movies and creations, the Marvel movies going on right now, Thanos popped up. That's a Jim Starlin creation inspired by Jack Kirby's Dark Side. When you look at the background of Thor and stuff like that, there's the Infinity Gauntlet and some other things that Jim Starlin had peppered in comics throughout the 70s and early 80s and stuff. And didn't get a dime on him. He's on my Facebook, so I, I've read about what he has to say about it. But here's number one and number three. So I'll finally sit down sometime and read these and see how what's made this book last over 30 years and get proposition for a, a movie. I uh, went to a Goodwill and they had a ton of DVDs, but usually when you go to Goodwill, you can get a DVD for like two bucks, two fifty, and stuff like that. I mean, if it's a season set, but somebody woke up, these came in. I ended up getting uh, the second season, yeah, season two of Showtime's Outer Limits from the nineties. Great episode. Uh, actually, ended up getting this for nine dollars, uh, but for two fifty, I ended up getting Doctor Who Robot from I think nineteen seventy four. This is Tom Baker's first adventure as Doctor Who. You know, it begins with the regeneration of the third Doctor into the fourth Doctor. And I tell you what, this thing still holds up. It's it's <laughs> it's 1974 effects, you know, nothing wrong with that. But Tom Baker is such a good Doctor Who that his performance just you can just watch him. He's fascinating to watch. 
and there's some interviews on this and they even get in their interviews with uh, Tom Baker a little bit and basically he said he was Doctor Who you know the way this Doctor Who was that was his personality and made a few jokes to get into how they did some of the special effects to do the opening sequence um, you know the, the diamond tunnel like you're going down a time tunnel or something a few other things you know they, they, they load them up but what was great about getting this for two dollars and fifty cents is that I have never seen this for under twenty five dollars maybe anywhere because you know they're BBC imports you know BBC video you know so now they're making season sets of the new Doctor Who and stuff and you can find them at Walmart they'll split up the set and you can get them for about twenty dollars but you're still paying forty dollars for a whole set at Walmart go to FYE or um, FYE oh let me think FYE if Target has them if uh, Barnes & Noble has them and stuff man you're paying 80 bucks you know so you know so that but anyway after free comic book you know after the free comic book day and I went and mailed two packages and did some other stuff found it gave me a biscuit and stuff while I was eating on the road and stuff I see this sign down here and it says two and a half miles yard sale and I'm like not not a yard sale but moving sale two and a half miles outside of town moving sale and I'm like well that's got to be around where I live so I go on down here go down my road I'm outside out of town now and stuff and I see this little sign up the road and I go right around the corner and it's amazing because it's in walking distance but there's a great big huge there's this you turn off the road and you go around a curve and now you can't see it from the main road and there's this wood bridge and in the wood bridge it has this like spring or river or some I mean there's like a little sort of a little bit of a waterfall just coming down out of the mountains going around these rocks and stuff and over the under this bridge and going to it looks beautiful and I've lived right around the corner from this to begin with so I go up this back road about a mile and there's some really nice houses out here in the middle of the woods and stuff I'm like holy crap I live down here on you know going on two years or something I think I hope that's all it's been and right here this has been here the whole time you go about maybe a mile up the road and there's a sign we got the garage open they're selling stuff and on one side of the garage I look over there and there's these tables out and it's these hardback sci-fi novels I mean I'm just like amazed and I start digging through them and I'm like oh my god and the guy comes up there a dollar a piece three for 250 or something I don't know so check to see if I had any money left on me and stuff it's, it's going to be a slow month I'll tell you that or a long month however you want to say it but I had to get a few things so I'll start out with what I ended up getting these in hardback I asked the guy how did he get these you know he looks like he was like I seriously look like he was like in his early 60s or something this guy is a lifelong sci-fi fan he's bringing out books in the house after we got talking that or you know people were offering him money for him with dust jackets but this book I had to get this is Harry Harrison the Stainless Steel Rat Wants You. The Stainless Steel Rat's a series of books that have been coming out since the 60s, I think. And what it is, it's it's in the future, and it's all about a man who wanted to be the greatest criminal ever, like in Thief and stuff. And he ends up getting these cons where he's running for president and stuff, or political things, and, you know, he, you know, just a really cool, pulpy kind of character and stuff. But this is a book that was floating around my house. This is from 79. Now, I remember always seeing this cover in in my house. You know, this is probably one of my stepdad or uncles or somebody's books they want. That's how I know it. Eagle Comics actually adapted a uh, stainless steel rat for president into a six issue miniseries, and who knows what else they've done. So, yeah, that was kind of cool to get. They get better. Okay. In the Harry Housen vein, this is actually a trilogy, the Death World trilogy. I've heard about it, never read it, but one of the real reasons I got this is that. That is a Richard Corbin of uh, heavy metal fame. Of uh, he adapts a ton of Edgar Allan Poe books, and he's been around since the '60s. And he's this den, and he had his stuff animated in the heavy metal mu uh, uh, heavy metal movie, and he's been around since the '60s and stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a Richard Corbin cover. He actually did sci-fi covers, and of course, this is you know th a trilogy of three. Okay. Um, in that vein, we move on to some Edgar Rice Burroughs, which blew my mind. Of Tarz, the man who created, you know, Tarzan, John Carter, or Mars and stuff. But we get another Richard Corbin um, cover. Did you hear that crack in that hardback? Listen to that. That's how good shape these are. But we get a John Carter or Mars story with a Richard Corbin cover, which is just amazing. Blows my mind. Oh, this has barely been cracked, man. 
But it's uh, Lana of Gathol with uh, John Carter of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. You know, it just blows my mind. And then the Red Garage Burroughs in the 70s, I've seen these movies. And I always thought they were kind of B-movies, and but they're 70s schlock and stuff. But it's, and I think they made a TV show out of this, or they tried to adapt to this a couple times. But here's the three stories by Edgar Rice Burroughs, the three books in one volume of The Land That Time Forgot. And of course it is out because of, you know, a movie had been made to this. And I think they're probably on like Netflix. You can probably find it on YouTube. But it's all, it's the trilogy, The Land That Time Forgot, The People That Time Forgot, and Out of Time's Abyss. Blows my mind. Now on to the good stuff, the stuff that just made me drool, where I lost my cool and I didn't have her poker face and there was no hustle on this guy, if you get what I'm saying, my Haller hustle. But I had this book, but these are like in like brand new condition. He said, I asked him, where did you get this stuff living out here in the middle of nowhere? You know, I was like, you know, I wasn't, I didn't pull my punches here. He's like, book clubs. He got all this stuff in the mail over the years and kept them in pristine condition. The Elric Saga, part one by Michael Moorcock. Okay, Elric Camelobond, Sailor on the Seas of Fate, my favorite Elric story. The Weird of the White Wolf, you know, they're, they're all here. So that'd be a deal. I got that one, but this is in such good shape. And I saw the second one. I thought there was only maybe two of them and stuff, right? So here's, uh, you know, Elric Saga Part 2. Almost, I mean, these are from the 80s. And they are like in new condition. You know, less than a buck. Vanishing Tower, Bane of the Black Sword, Stormbringer. Stormbringer is probably my second favorite of the book. Because all hell breaks loose. Alright. So we go on up until like the late 80s, early 90s. I didn't even know about this one. Elric Saga Part 3. Alright. Michael Moore kept, kept doing them. So I've got the rest of these. I mean, these the Elric Saga books. Fortress of the Pearl, Revenge of the Rose. The Eternal Champion series, the Michael Moorcock stuff, this character started out in magazines in the 60s and started getting his books published of Elric in the late 60s up into the 70s, all the way to the 90s and stuff like this. Uh, basically, he's got a demon sword. He's the exact opposite of uh, Conan with a little heavy metal popped in there. You know, he's an albino king in love with his cousin, uh, real weak and frail, and he uses magic and herbs and drugs to keeps his strength up and then he gets Stormbringer which is a uh, sword a ring sword of sorts and stuff like that but it's actually a demon and it's a it's got vamp vampire qualities and every time that Elric ends up killing somebody I mean the sword can sometimes reach out on its own with, while it's in his hand and fight for him and you know kill people and their soul it eats their soul and it, it makes it gives Elric strength you know it's almost like you know, an allegory, you know, kind of metaphorically like a, you know, taking drugs and stuff, you know, but great stuff. All right, and then we go on up until the Elric Sarga Part 5. Look at this. I mean, I, I mean I've mean, i looked up because I've read all six of the first books, you know, and there's no, nothing wrong with going back and refreshing and stuff. So, you know, I'm like, I've got two more volumes, you know, and this, this blows my mind. To get that Elric stuff just blows my mind. I, I mean, I'm constantly looking for some good formats for that and stuff for other stuff but then it's like a lot of the first thing that caught my eye that actually actually made me look over at the hardback books and stuff like that is this 1976 hardback story by George Lucas of Star Wars um, you know the novelization before the movie came out this came out and what is good is uh, Steve Ogden sent me the soft cover of this which I thought was amazing so here's the hardback in really good condition and it's got movie footage this is before the movie came out 1976 the movie came out it's May of 77 and you know we got some shots of what's coming in the movie I mean look at that you know it just blows my mind seeing this stuff it gives the cast and the, the names there's Peter Cushing as Moff General Moff uh, Tarkin you know uh, you know just I'm really interested if this goes with the movie or the original script, so that'll be cool. Peter Cushing, Alec Guinness, I mean, just look at that. This, that is awesome. Alright guys, that's my haul. I'm sure i got some other stuff here, but and that's going to be it. That might be a slow month. i got a great big huge uh, Memorial Day. I think it's Memorial Day. Yeah, May Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. They're turning the town of Hillsville, Virginia, which is about a 30 minute drive from here into a flea market it's not as big as the Labor Day one I enjoy it so there might be some stuff at the end of the month but we'll see what happens during this month we got some stuff going on been thinking about moving a few other things going on so basically I think it's uh, 
see what needs to go to Goodwill, thin the herd here a little bit, see, put some more stuff on eBay, and that's it. You know, we'll see what the future videos hold. All right, you guys enjoy your free comic book weekend. Tomorrow is Star Wars Day, May the Fourth. So may the fourth be with you. Can't believe I said that, but have fun.